that photo of me in the thumbnail that is not clickbait that actually happened if you want to get the whole story i've got video footage and photos the whole thing keep watching Hi, I'm Nicole. Welcome to my channel if you're new. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm 52 years old and live in the San Francisco Bay Area. Today we'll be talking about my experience, it's actually my second experience, with uh, Levulin Blue Light Therapy or Photodynamic Therapy or PDT. PDT is a way to get pre-skin cancerous spots off of your skin before they turn into actual skin cancer. I'll let you know what products I use to help speed the healing process and make myself more comfortable along the way because believe me, it was not comfortable. A lot of times it really hurt. And there's actually one product I use that's quite revolutionary uh, that just by luck I happen to have. I really hope this video helps anyone who might be having to have PDT to know how to prepare. Um, the first time I had it, I had a very, very little reaction at all. Almost, I was like, wow, this is easy, walk in the park. <laughs> uh, and this time was really, really different. So um, you might wanna watch the other video also. I'll link it down below uh, to see, you know, kind of another experience I had with it that was completely different and very, very comfortable uh, as opposed to what happened to me this time. The first time I had photodynamic therapy, the recovery was super, super easy, no issues at all. I kind of turned a little bit red, you know, had a couple little things peel, you know, here and here, and a little bit here, not bad at all. It was really, it didn't hurt when the blue light was hitting my face. Everything was totally cool and easy, and within three or four days, I look completely normal, had just a light tan. But then the bugger little spots that I had here, which by the way, all of you out there, if you're applying sunscreen, make sure you're getting all of your face. What I found was when I was doing this, I was crossing over and missing here and here. And those spots, I think barely ever got sunscreen because I was just, you know, kind of laxative, hurry, wipe it out of my face. Make sure you're getting all the spots all over your face, little places you might be missing. Really get in there so you protect yourself. So hopefully you don't ever have to have this done. My previous video gives all the ins and outs about level and blue light therapy, why it works, how it works. But let me just really quickly give you a rundown uh, on what it is just in a couple sentences. This is from the American Cancer Society website. Photodynamic therapy is a treatment that uses special drugs called photosensitizing agents along with light to kill cancer cells. The drugs only work after they've been activated or turned on by certain kinds of light. PDT may also be called photoradiation therapy, phototherapy, or photochemotherapy. In my case, the photosensitizing agent was put on my skin. They can also do it where, like certain areas of the esophagus, they've got ways to do it internally, but that's not what I did. Um, and over a certain amount of time, the drug is absorbed by the cancer cells. The light is then applied to the areas to be treated, and the light causes the drug to react with oxygen, which forms a chemical that kills the cells. Now I'm gonna go ahead and be popping video footage in of my actual day. I did start out taking some at the office, but I didn't take as much as I would have if I thought, oh, I'm for sure doing a full video of this, but, because I thought if it was gonna be just like the first time where it was kinda like nothing major happened to my face, it didn't make sense to put out a whole other video on it, but well then things totally blew up. So, so um, I will go ahead and be putting a video of myself talking along with video of the day. So here we go. Here I am again for my second blue light therapy treatment. Here I go. When you get to the doctor's office, they scrub your face with acetone. Yes, it smells like nail polish remover. <laughs> they scrub it onto your face and then they paint on the drug that will go ahead and react with the blue light. My face has been scrubbed with acetone and they put the stuff on, I'm going home now, and then they're going to do the blue light. The first time I had it done, they let that drug sit on my face for an hour and a half. This time that I went, they told me we're gonna do it for three hours because apparently their rep said that it works better if you leave it on longer. So I was supposed to marinate for three hours. And they said, well, if you live nearby, you can just go home. Well, I knew that you needed to stay, you know, somewhere away from windows and all that because you didn't want it to activate before they put you into the blue light. And the first time I had it done, they put me in a room where they kind of turned off half the lights. You know, the doctor's office have those lights above, you know, they just turn off half of those. And I was able to just kind of be on my phone for the hour and a half that I had to wait. This time, since I had so much time to kill, they said, just come back after two and a half hours. I went home, I wore a big old hat, of course, to drive myself home because I didn't want the light hitting me. I had sunglasses, I was trying to kind of hide as much of my face as possible. Got home, I shut all the shutters, pulled the shades, you know, did all that so that everything was pretty darkened anywhere that I would be, which was really just, you know, my office, the kitchen to get some water and, you know, the bathroom. So, you know, I just went to my office and I worked on my computer and I was back exactly after two and a half hours. Said be back after two and a half hours. So we have plenty of time, you know, to get you at the three hour mark in front of the machine. Well, then they made me wait. I was in the waiting room for at least 45 minutes. So I didn't even get over to the blue light area until, gosh, 
gosh, it must have been at least, mm, you know, three hours and 15 minutes uh, till they actually took me back and then they got me set up and you know what I mean? I got to pull my hair back. You know, it, it was probably almost three and a half hours before they actually turned it on. Now, the weird thing was as I was walking back there with a girl, my face felt very I almost got a hard shell of a mask over my face, you know, like Phantom of the Opera or uh, Sleep No More. You know, I felt like I one of those, like a mask, like my, my, my skin was really feeling like hard and weird. And the girl just kind of went, oh, okay. You know, like she didn't really ask me more about it. And then I got in front of the blue light. I've got video footage of that. Well, it feels more stingy than last time. I think because it's been on so much longer. So pretty much 30 seconds after this footage ends, my face hurts so bad with the light. I was like, oh my God, because it just you know, kind of as it warmed up and got going, I was dying. And so she said, oh, why don't you just put some music on? Did you have a headset or something? And I said, I did. And so I queued up some of my you know, friends. I have a watch later uh, playlist you know, on my, on my phone. Um, so I had my Jen Loves Reviews and Michelle Wong and Weird History and Bailey Sorry and kind of some stuff queued up there. So I put the headphones in. I seriously was like, like Le Mans breathing, trying to get through the 17 minutes that that blue light is hitting your face and when I was done I was so so red oh my god I'm a total tomato look how red this is this time wow keeping it on for three hours made a huge difference well on my way home now the last time you know they gave me ointment to put on um, after I put sunscreen on they gave me sunscreen and stuff and this time they didn't and I think I was just like whoa you know from like kind of a pain and just wanted to kind of go home uh, I didn't even think of it either to remind them but that kind of they kind of should have should have done that, I guess. Um, but you know, I had a big hat and stuff, and I live like two and a half miles away, so I just drove home. Oh my god, I'm in the car now, and ugh, now I wish Steve had driven me. He offered, and I could be like just hiding in the back, <laughs> covering my face because the sun is just <gasps> burning. And went into my house. I just got home from the blue light therapy for the second time. I had it about I know, a little less than a year ago. And this time they changed the protocol. Instead of leaving it on for an hour and a half, the medication, uh, they actually send you home, leave it on for three hours. And they had me be a bit closer to the light. And look at this, a whole different ball game than the last time I did it. So I'll do check-ins with my regular camera and everything too. I wasn't even expecting to do another video about this because I thought it was going to be pretty much the same type of thing. But this is so much worse. So I've been home for about an hour and I think it's getting even redder. Oh, like bursting into flames. Oh, it hurts to smile kind of because my lips, I didn't put it on my lips, but it felt really stingy while they were doing it. Once I got home, I just could not believe how red I was. I was really surprised because this had not happened last time, but I thought, okay, well, I've seen people that have had this happen because of course I stalked videos and stuff before I had it done the first time. And I thought, you know, I was gonna have this total, you know, really big reaction to it or I turned really red. But then what happened was I started swelling and I called the doctor about three hours after I got home. I got home around I think like 3, 3.30 and I called the doctor's office about 6.30. This is three hours after I had the blue light therapy and my face is really swelling now. Before it was just really red and hot and burny feeling and now it feels like it's really swelling up. I started noticing like this kind of downturn here um, and that's just because my face is getting so fat. It feels really tight, almost like I have a mask on. I just called my doctor and he told me this is normal. People swell differently. Luckily, I have already taken Advil and I've been kind of spraying a cool mist, the Kapari um, kind of coconut spray on my face. He said I could go ahead and put ice on my face, cool compresses, so I'm going to go do that. I will continue with updates showing you what's happening to my face and hopefully the end, it'll be normal. My little bad spots we completely gone. By the way, it hurts to smile because I can't really stretch my face right now because it's so swollen. So if I look grumpy, it's like not that I'm trying to be grumpy, but I honestly, I just can't smile right now. <laughs> That's as big as it gets. Oh my God. So this is no fun. Um, I can't even like bite into a peach. My face is so swollen. I look like a totally different person. My upper lip is sticking like way, way out. Ugh. ouch. It was like really starting to swell and get crazy. So I was trying to just hang in there, uh, but it got worse and worse to the point where it was starting to get difficult to kind of talk to me in my mouth. I couldn't even like open my mouth to like bite into a piece of fruit 
or put a fork in my mouth, uh, you know, it's like getting hard to drink. I mean, I just couldn't, couldn't move. Um, you know, my eyes were like kind of looking like they're sinking in because my face was getting so, so big. And finally at around, I don't know, 10, 30 night, I was telling myself, there's something really wrong. This is not normal. When I walked into the ER, I'm like, oh my God, you know, like what? <laughs> and they thought I had an allergic reaction and because it was a nightmare of a night, of course, they couldn't get an IV into my arm. And then they're like, well, we're just gonna do prednisone anyway, since you have an allergic reaction, why don't we just go ahead and give it to you orally? So they gave me some oral prednisone and then my face just kept on swelling. And then all of a sudden it was like tears were coming out of my cheeks. There's like water coming out. Like, you know when you burn yourself in the oven and you get a blister and then the blister pops and water just comes gushing out of it. They're all, wow, this is an allergic reaction you've got a really bad burn on your face. I was like, oh, great. Uh, so at that point, they pretty much, um, you know, said, just go ahead and go home. The prednisone should help. And by the time, you know, they said to go home, my face had actually finally stopped getting larger. It just kind of frozen in its tracks. It wasn't going down, but it wasn't going up anymore. So I finally got to go home. It was around three in the morning or so. And then I called the dermatologist's office and left a message telling them what happened. And then at seven in the morning, you know, my phone dinged and I had a text from them and they were saying, hey, you know, how's it going? I'm like, well, you know, it stopped swelling, but it's enormous, it's crazy. And I sent them a picture of my face and they go, why don't you just come right down here? And so I went down there. It was probably by eight o'clock that, you know, they said that they were open to go down there. So I probably scared everyone when I walked into the waiting room because you know, I had totally covered myself with a scarf, big old hat. I'd had sunglasses on, I took those off to go in there, but they're probably like, uh, yeah, what are you, like the woman of mystery? They probably thought it was some crazy plastic surgery or something the way I looked. Um, and then they took me back there and then the doctor walks in, you know, flanked by two other people who are like taking total notes on everything. And I told them what happened. I was asking them, you know, why did this happen? Why did I swell like this? I mean, I get turning red and the peeling and all that, but why did I swell? And they never really gave me an answer. And I think it's on so I think they left the stuff on my face too long. And possibly also, they didn't tell me when I got home not to work on my computer. Maybe the light from that kind of pre-activated things. I don't know, because they never actually said. I just couldn't get really an answer out of them. But in the end, they went ahead and they gave me a shot, kind of, you know, kind of one like in your hip kind of area, kind of butt hip area. And they said that should take care of it. And said, go ahead and go home. Gave me a big old thing of aquaphors to keep that on your face. And sent me on my merry way. It is less than 24 hours since I had my blue light therapy. I was at the ER last night, got oral steroids, took Benadryl. Now I had a shot this morning at eight in the morning of steroids from my dermatologist and I still look like this. Um, yeah, well supposedly now when you have a reaction like this, you do have the best uh, outcome afterwards, but uh, it's just not a nice recovery. It's very stingy, I'm taking Advil. This is night two, right before I go to bed. Just had a giant blister pop. Still look like a tomato, but the face has gone down somewhat. I got a hold of my friend Bonnie. Bonnie and I have known each other for like, gosh, probably about 23 years or maybe, yeah, about 23 years since our kids were, since our sons, our oldest sons were under one years old. And I, I knew she was consulting for a company uh, that made this cream that helps after you have like a really major laser treatments or surgery or things like that. And she'd give me a jar and I thought, well, one day if I have, you know, photo facial or something, maybe it'll help things, you know, go better, faster, stronger. Uh, and I said, hey, can I use this? What do you think? I said, they sent me home with Aquaphor. I said, oh my gosh, Aquaphor is just total garbage. Yes, take your Aquaphor off and put this on. It is Saturday morning. I can almost open my mouth all the way. My eyes are still crazy puffy. I'm still very, very red. I just washed my face. I got all the Aquaphor off because I'm going to be trying this cream. Uh, this is by Dermafax. My friend works for this company. She gave me this a while back in case I ever had a laser treatment of any sort. And you know, I thought, oh, down the line, I probably would have IPL again or something. So I was like, awesome. Well, I've never used it. And now with this horrible burn, I can see my swelling has finally started to go down somewhat, thank God. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to put this on and see uh, what it does because it's supposed to really help things heal a lot faster. So here goes. This is Recovery RX. So um, it's sold like by plastic surgeons and it's supposed to help speed up recovery. You can use it six times a day and she said use it at least three times today. This is what it looks like. It's now on my tomato face, so let's see what happens. It felt nice going on. Uh, it has the consistency kind of of uh, 
a thinner aquaphor, uh, nice and very kind of thick and rich. And as you can see, obviously it has some shine to it because it's very emollient. I'm putting on my lips too. My lips are so dry. And then for just a little bit of information about this off of the box here, it says that Recover X features a hygroscopic formula that acts like a magnet to run moisture from the air into damaged skin, creating a reservoir of hydration and a moisturizing healing environment. Clinically proven to help reduce redness and swelling and to support recovery of laser treated skin within seven days. And it does not clog pores, is non-greasy and fragrance free. So I guess the secret sauce in here that really helps your recovery is silicone. It says that Recovery X contains a specially formulated silicone compound that optimizes the delivery of orthosilicic acid, OSA, a naturally occurring molecule that is associated with healthy connective tissue growth. I've had the Recovery X on for about an hour now and I'm feeling tightening. Um, I think possibly, I'll have to compare, but uh, I don't think I have a lot less redness yet, but I'm feeling like I'm less swollen. Uh, I mean, I'm actually slightly getting a cheekbone back again under my eyes is still really, really bad, um, but I am feeling tightening happen. So I'll check in again shortly keeping my hair back because this is so emollient that my hair keeps getting caught in it. I had no shininess left, so it was so soaked in, I thought I better reapply. Oh, this hurts, by the way. Ow. It's eight o'clock at night, and I now have put on the cream about four times, and I, I feel like my redness is a lot less, especially for some reason on my forehead area. I'm really starting to peel now though too, wow. I'm about to go to bed and this is what it looks like at about 11 o'clock at night. It's the morning of day three and as you can see, I'm starting to really, really peel a lot. Um, the redness has lessened up here on my forehead, um, but I'm still pretty red here and uh, still not feel feeling really great, <laughs> but um, it, it just feels really, really, really tight. It kind of hurts a bit here where the major peeling is going on, um, but the rest just feels really, really, really tight. Okay, I'm going to apply my Recovery X. You can see how much my face has stretched because the white was way over here on my eyes. Oh my gosh, can't wait to have my normal face back. <laughs> kind of dabbing it on my chin because my chin is so sore from all the peeling. Oh, that feels so much better. I'm going to go to bed now. It is the end of day three and my forehead's looking way better. Dark spots have popped up here. I'm hoping that'll peel off and my chin is super peeling and really hurts. It's Monday night, it's day four. Uh, most of my swelling has gone down. I mean, there's still some going on, but like compared to what it was, this is a huge improvement. Lots of dark spots are popping up. I always had these, okay, um, but I have never noticed these because these are from the driver's side of my um, face. And like I've had um, IPL, uh, you know, photofacial before that's helped get rid of that kind of thing. But there's stuff popping up all over that I'm hoping will peel off as all this peeling is happening. It's the morning of day five, just still looking pretty red, but a lot better. But tons of dark spots have come up, lots of peeling going on. Uh, this hurts a lot. <laughs> so just a little check-in. My swelling was going down quite significantly. However, I was peeling like crazy and I was getting really worried because my chin area, oh my gosh, this area here, it was so red and so raw and the dead skin wasn't really coming off and I thought, oh my God, am I have scarring? I mean, what, what is happening down here? So I went and saw Dr. Barbara Persons. So I met Barbara on a couple other occasions. She's total sweetie, super smart, so nice. And actually I'd had lunch with her and Bonnie, I don't know, a few months before. So she was so nice. Um, I texted her and she said, oh my gosh, come right down. And I walked in and she said, okay, don't worry, it's going to be all right. Your face will go back to normal. So I was like, oh, thank God. Because I was at the point where I was just getting really worried because it was so deep. It just was so bad, as you can see by these pictures and video. So then she gave me a couple things to use. And the first thing she put on me was this. This was her barrier repair. This is her private labeled um, products she has, you know, so those that she sells. And then she also gave me this, which is her antioxidant mist to mist on top. This barrier repair cream was amazing. She put it on her office and when I 
I drove home, probably about 20 minutes after she put it on me till I got home, a bunch of the dead skin was already kind of rolling off. And by the next day, most of the dead skin was off. Just so you know what this is, it says it's a unique dressing formulated to aid in the skin barrier healing process, also provides protection and helps seal stressed skin conditions such as chapped, dry, and windburn skin. So what I did is I would put my Recovery X on and then I put this on top and then I would mist this on top of that. So I kind of had a little three layer thing going. And what it says about the antioxidant mist is that it will soothe, calm, and rejuvenate skin with a refreshing mist fortified with a rich blend of anti antioxidants to brighten dull, tired skin and refine your complexion. Micronutrients help enhance skin tone and remove skin impurities while powerful humectants provide gentle hydration, ideal for all skin types, including the most sensitive. Oh, by the way, this is a great makeup setting spray. And oh, I'm just gonna spray some right now because, oh, it smells so good. Just that beautiful lavender, and spa smell. Okay, I hope I didn't get that on my camera lens. Oop. I'm now at the plastic surgeon's, Dr. Barbara Persons, and she's gonna have a look at what is going on with my face. It's day six, and I've been using this barrier repair from Dr. Barbara Persons since yesterday. It has helped all the dead skin come off of my face. Look what a difference. And I'm not quite as red today. I've also been using her antioxidant spray on top of that. I'm about to go to bed on night six, looking a lot better. I continued to use these three products until I was completely healed. Huge shout out to Bonnie and Dr. Barbara Persons for their help <laughs> because I think it would take it a lot longer for my skin to heal and get back to normal looking if they had not jumped in and recommended these products to me. So thank you guys. You're the best. Here I am at one week. I think I could actually wear makeup again if I wanted to. Still pink, but just very small spots that are peeling. Thank God. <laughs> it's been a week and a day since the blue light therapy and thank God all my swelling is down. As you can see, I'm still a bit pink. There's still a little bit of peeling going on. It's the morning of day nine and as you can see, huge improvement, still some redness on my nose and chin. My skin overall, it's feeling smooth, but in some areas, especially down here, still a bit tight. So I'm about to uh, cleanse and then put more on it. I'm just keeping emollients, uh, the Recovery X on it, uh, you know, vitamin C serum, uh, just to kind of try to get things back into shape. In case you're wondering what I washed my face with during this time, I used something really, really gentle. I love this by Pure Lease. When I'm not wearing makeup and want to wash my face, or like in the morning when I just want a gentle wash, this is wonderful. I used this also the first time I had PDT. Um, it is the Blue Lotus 4-in-1 Cleansing Milk, and it says that it gently cleanses the skin, removes makeup, tones, and soothes, and is sulfate-free for all skin types. The other thing that I did to make Make myself more comfortable was I slept on a silk pillowcase. I have a bunch of videos about silk pillowcases and I think that even if you don't have photodynamic therapy, it's just the best thing ever for your face, uh, your skin, your hair. Think about it, your hair slides on it so it doesn't get roughed up, you don't have bed head in the morning, and your skin, you know, cotton bunches up, pushes in, gives you that wrinkle face, and now that I'm over 50, that wrinkle will take like an hour to go away rather than like two minutes when I was young, um, and it's just smooth for your skin, and it also doesn't absorb all the great creams and serums and stuff we put on our faces like cotton does. So cotton can, I believe it's 27 times each molecule can absorb 27 times its weight in moisture, and silk doesn't do that. So all your great serums or your Recovery X is not getting sucked into the silk pillowcase. So just for your comfort, and because I can't sleep on my back. They told me it'd be better to sleep kind of sitting up while I was all swollen like this. But, you know, I, I'm just not a back sleeper, so I kind of had to be on my side. And, oh, you know, it just felt fine. Cotton would have felt so, so rough. So get a silk pillowcase if you're going to have PDT. Honestly, you will thank me later. So while this entire experience was obviously uh, painful, not comfortable, and rather upsetting, what really bothered me pretty much the most was that the dermatologist's office never checked on me. Not once not the day that they gave me the shot in their office, not a couple days after that to see how I was doing, not a week after, not a month after, nothing, never checked on me. My dog's vet calls to check on him after he has his annual shots just to make sure he's okay or follow up if he's on some medication or my kids' doctors would always call to check on them if they had something going on or if they went to urgent care. My doctor checks if I went to urgent care, I get a call to find out if things are okay and they did not call ever. Not once. I mean, I left the dermatologist's office with my face like the size of like, I don't even know, some giant basketball. 
and they gave me that shot. They never, ever checked on me. So that really, really bothered me. I know they're a big practice now, but I've been going there for like 15 years. Now in terms of costs, let's talk about the money side of this real quickly. The first time I had PDT, I had out of pocket of just under $500 that I had to pay that my insurance did not cover. This time, you know how it depends on the time of year with how much you have paid. I, I have a deductible that I have to get to before they pay at a higher percentage. Uh, and I guess I had hit more of that because this time it was like, $50 that I had to pay out of pocket for what happened, you know, for the dermatologist portion of the medical bill. However, I had a thousand dollar emergency room bill, a thousand dollars. So since they happened pretty much at the same time, I think that maybe what brought down my 500 was because I had paid a thousand. So, um, that is how much I ended up having to pay for this in case you were wondering, but that'll vary depending on your insurance, of course. And my insurance, it's, it's okay. It's not anything awesome. It's not horrible, but I just say it's kind of fair to Midland on the uh, scale of insurance. I've got some friends who have way better who pay way less out of pocket. To this day, I still don't know why my swelling was so horrible. I tend to think it's because they left the medication on too long and perhaps me being in front of my computer like that help things move along too. So I would just recommend that you get very specific instructions from your doctor if you are sent home to kill some time while the medication is on your face. Get it in writing so that you know exactly what to do because you know people say stuff to you, you're having a medical procedure, you might forget, you know something might slip your mind. Uh, you know I mean just I think they should write down if they send you home with the stuff on your face what to do. Like fully darkened room, no computers or, or nothing larger than your phone on, you know, mid-level brightness or something like that. I think that would've been really good. Another thing, if your face starts to swell more than a little bit, do call your doctor and let them know it's not just a little bit of swelling. If what happens to you, I probably waited too long. I probably should have gone to the emergency room a couple hours before I did, but I was trying to tough it out and I figured, oh, it'll stop, it'll start going down. Well, it didn't. So if that starts happening, you know, get some medical attention quickly because it probably would have stopped you know, a lot sooner if they'd given me the prednisone earlier and then it wouldn't have been quite as bad. Now, if you're wondering how I knew I had pre-skin cancer spots, my friend Lisa Lehman, um, wonderful dear friend of mine, went to college together. She's had several little spots removed from her face and scalp area. And she said a lot of times it's just like a, a little dry patch that keeps coming back or almost like a little bit of, like a little pimple that keeps kind of coming off. And that I had both of those. So I had a little dry patch right here that just kept coming back. And I'm, you know, I'm moisturizing, I'm exfoliating. I mean, there's no way I should have a little dry skin patch all the time in the same spot. And then right here, I had a little kind of pimple thing that kind of came up and went away, came up, went away. And after about six weeks of that, I was like, okay, this is weird. And I went in and they said, yep, sure enough. So if you have anything like that, do go get seen as soon as possible so they can get it when it's, you know, the pre, pre skin cancerous rather than when it actually is skin cancer. In case you wonder about my skin since this all went on, uh, here's me now with no makeup on at all on my skin. So you can just kind of see what my skin looks like. Um, I didn't notice any giant improvement to my skin, although those pesky little precancer spots did not come back. So that is a good thing. Although I will need to have this done once a year, pretty much for the rest of my life. So that's my second round of PDT story. Now I'd love to hear from you. Have you had PDT? Do you need to have PDT? Uh, what brought you to this video? Maybe my crazy scary photo, or is it something that you're having done in the future? Um, if you haven't had it done yet, you might wanna watch my first video where the reaction was extremely mild and the entire experience was very, very pleasant. So, you know, hopefully you'll fall somewhere in the middle and this didn't scare anybody off. But we'd love to hear what you think down in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this content, we'd love if you hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. It really helps me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching and it's not goodbye, just so long until next time.